This is Jacob with JL Acres, and uh, this evening I wanted to show you one of the diverse cover crop mix that we have going on here. Um, this was planted on July 21st after some wheat came off. Um, we were a few weeks behind getting this planted after the wheat came off, but we eventually did. And then it came back about uh, two weeks later or so on August 6th, and I planted a little show plot with each of the um, different things that we have out here in this mix individually so we can kind of tell what they were. Um, so far this mix has had probably I would say less than two inches of rain on it. We're in early September now. We had a pretty dry late July. August was really dry. The show plot that I've got here um, has had probably less than an inch or if, an, if it was over an inch it was just barely over an inch. Um, I think this mix maybe got just a little bit of rain uh, that the show plot mix missed. Um, so I'll show you here what we've got and then we'll take a little walk and see what we um, have growing out in the larger mix. So we, here we've got some sun hemp uh, for fixing nitrogen. Um, it can also be grazed. We're going to be grazing this larger plot here. Some sorghum sedan grass, some good root structure, root structure and uh, biomass in the heat. Grows well in the dryness here. We've got cow peas um, growing here for some more nitrogen fixing in hot, dry weather. Next to the cow peas, I've got some phacelia or phacelia. Um, these I picked mostly just because I've heard really good things about their root structure. And I haven't really dug any up recently. Um, they're also supposed to be a really nice pollinating mix or a pollinating plant. Uh, we'll see if we get any blooms out of it. But for right now, it's kind of a, a lower growing like thing and it, I was actually impressed uh, it's a really small seed it came up um, surprisingly well with some of these larger seeded things in the mix and we've got some sunflowers here um, nothing special I think just an oil seed there next to the sunflowers I've got some crimson clover and I've got some yellow sweet clover so some nitrogen fixers and potential grazers in there uh, next to those I've got here some German millet so this would also be for grazing, um, something that could also grow in a little bit drier conditions. Next to the German millet, I've got purple top turnips. Again, grazing option and a brassica root structure in there. And then next to the purple top turnips, we've just got our tillage radish. Again, um, for that root, nutrient accumulation. Um, the cows will kind of nibble on them. They don't like them as much as the turnips, but there they are. Um, Next to the tillage radish, I have some safflower here, and I'm growing safflower. Um, I put that in a couple of, my, couple of my mixes because I've got some fields that just got really compacted in 2019 with all the rain. Um, and there's a lot of these uh, in the mix that will put down a good tap root and grow decent in compaction, but safflower will really drill in. Um, sunflower, if it hit a, hits a compaction layer, it will not, uh, it will have a harder time breaking through. And I've been told that safflower just really punches through compaction to get down deep. And so I've added that in there to help punch some holes if we have any compaction layers. So there's the safflower. Next to the safflower, I've got some 4010 peas. Um, I'm actually impressed with how these peas are growing. Uh, just with the minimal water they've had. And then next to the peas, we've got some Proso millet. And this is probably um, looking the poorest out of all of this test plot. For this uh, show plot here, all I did was just broadcast the seed and rake it in, so nothing special. Um, and it was, we did not have a lot of soil moisture. Um, and then I went over here, amongst all the button weed, and volunteer wheat. Here we've got lots of volunteer wheat growing in here, which the cows will eat. I mix everything together, uh, mostly by volume, and kind of planted it all together here. And I'm kind of surprised in this mix, you can look here like the sorghum is um, probably uh, two inches or so shorter than the sorghum that's planted by itself. And uh, same with the sun hemp, it's a little bit shorter. But the brassicas are really thick in here, the tillage radish and the purple top turnips. And you can see there's some acelia and some uh, clovers growing in there. 
And so um, they're all mixed together and growing pretty happy in this little mix. I mostly did this just to see um, what the difference would be with all of them mixed together versus in their separate little um, areas here. So again, yeah, we've got the sun hemp, the sorghum sedan grass, cow peas, the phacelia, sunflowers, crimson clover, yellow clover, um, the German millet, the um, purple top turnips, and the tillage radish, which I would say I would not be able to tell apart if I didn't have it written down. The safflower is next to them. And some peas, which again would be a nitrogen fixer, and some more proso millet that could be grazed here. And so that's what the showpiece looks like. And then we look out here over this bigger field. Um, this was drilled with a John Deere uh, 750 drill. And you can see we've got, um, obviously we've got some weeds. We've got our button weed growing in here. Uh, we've got some pig weed. Uh, the sunflowers are quite a bit bigger, about ready to start blooming here. Um, and we've got the sun hemp is obviously a lot taller. Uh, our uh, millet has decided that it wanted to go to seed. Um, I'm not going to be too worried about that. I think the birds will eat that um, and other critters. We'll find out. This is going to be soybeans next year. So we'll see if that becomes an issue or not. Uh, and then we've got, you know, some good healthy leaves here for the, this would be the turnips. Um, and I only know that because the radish here has a, that's the radish bulb, that white there. So that must be the radish leaf. This is the turnip leaf. Um, you can see in here, we've got the clovers coming in there. We've got the phacelia is coming in there. The one thing that I really can't tell if it's coming or not. Oh, I do have some safflower. I was thinking I hadn't seen any of it here, but that looks like the safflower is coming. Um, I was unsure if the millet was actually coming or not. And some of these that look kind of like foxtail might be millet uh, because the foxtail that I chose was in, or the, the millet, one of the millets that I chose was in the foxtail family. And I, I did that because um, Klaus Martin, you can look him up on YouTube, talked about how, uh, talks about how whatever the soil needs, that will be, it'll end up being the ideal condition for, let me, let me start over there. Uh, plants will grow, uh, always tend to grow in their most ideal soil conditions, what's ever best for them. And if there happens to be a problem with your soil, then there will be certain plants that grow that really like that ideal condition. But generally, they won't grow for more than um, one season, maybe two seasons. And then they've actually uh, corrected the soil so it's no longer ideal for them. Kind of that succession idea in nature that you have, if you have a field that you just leave bare, first you'll have a whole bunch of annuals come up, and generally you'll probably see broadleafs come the first year. Then you might have some more annual grasses come, and then over time you get perennials that come. And then they talk about the shrubs and the trees, or if you're native prairie ground, you might just have um, perhaps prairie grasses or something come up. So the idea being that uh, if the soil, in this field we have a lot of foxtail growing, so if we grow something that is in the same family of foxtail, so like a millet uh, is kind of same family as foxtail, uh, then that will help correct the soil, and then next year we won't have the millet growing, or that we won't have the fox cell growing because the millet will have corrected the soil uh, in whatever way it might be deficit. So that's kind of the thinking behind some of the things I've got in here and then just overall diversity. I also, one thing I didn't mention, I said I do have some oats in this mix. I didn't put them in the show plot because I know what oats look like growing. Um, so there's some oats there. In general, if I were to do this mix again, and I'll pull it out real quick here, how many pounds of what I have. I would go a little bit heavier actually on the um, oats and probably um, mostly heavier on some of the oats. And I maybe would not drill it quite as deep because I think I did have an issue with some of the um, millets germinating well. 
I'm not going to walk across this wire right now because I do have some younger calves here and it is a hot wire. Um, they're down way at the end of the field. I'm strip grazing this here. So I've got here, we'll see if you can see it here. These are the pounds of everything that I uh, planted. I'll cover up here the name so I don't embarrass the landowner here. Um, so we've got uh, the pounds of each of those things and this is about a 16 acre field so that's total pounds um, divided across about 16 acres you can see some of these are maybe a little bit light um, I would probably go heavier on some things over others this is going to be soybeans so I didn't uh, next year so I didn't push the legumes too much and uh, I was planning on grazing this so I, that kind of influenced what I was doing. If this was going to be soybeans without grazing, um, I probably would go heavier. I might actually throw some, um, I would probably really back down. I might not even put any clover in, or if I did, I would do much less clover. I probably would, um, yeah, mostly just up the oats and kind of decrease some of the other things. I probably would go heavier on the sorghum sedan grass if I was not going to graze this. That kind of limits me after the frost. It can, uh, this stuff can put out an acid or uh, arsenic that um, can be harmful if it's grazed right after a frost. So, yeah, that's just kind of the show, a show of what is going on here. Um, all sorts of different things, weeds included, but uh, I think the calves are enjoying munch on it. I think. The uh, soil life is doing pretty well for having only about two inches of rain on this. It looks really good, uh, even if the seeding is overall a little bit lighter than what I would prefer. Um, but that's all part of experimenting. And uh, we'll try to keep things going and show you what this looks like uh, maybe in the spring before we plant it. Show you what kind of residue we have. Um, maybe I'll have a video in between there later on this fall. And of course, we'll try to show a field uh, picture of what the beans look like growing on this next year. So I'm going to stop this right now. Um, I should hopefully, one of these days I need to record a video of the corn and beans that were on the spring cover crop. I can kind of give you an update on that. But I just want to show you this diverse mix that I've got going on uh, and the show plots. So you can kind of see what some of this stuff looks like. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys are enjoying these videos and learning some things. And maybe you'll even try some things on your own. If you have any questions about cover crops, even if it's like in a garden setting or larger fields uh, setting, feel free to leave a comment uh, or get a hold of me and I'll do my best to answer your questions or point you towards someone that might be able to answer them better than I can. So with that, I think I'll sign off and uh, hope you guys have a good day.